Hey everybody, this is Brendan here with Common Motor, common-motor.com on the internet. And today we're going to show you how to do a carburetor synchronization on CB550. This is going to apply for all the four-cylinder Honda bikes made from the late 60s to the late 70s. So stay tuned. We're going to go into all the details of it. This is going to be a two-part video series. This is video one. We're going to talk about what carburetor synchronization is, how to set it up, why it's important, etc. And in the second video, we'll actually perform the sync. But definitely make sure you watch both videos so you get the whole picture of what's going on. What is vacuum syncing? So we're dealing with a motorcycle here, in this case, a CB550 Honda that has four cylinders. It also has four carburetors. Each carburetor feeds one cylinder. And the goal with the vacuum sink is we're trying to even the flow through each of the carburetors to the cylinders. Let's put this in maybe a little bit simpler analogy to wrap our heads around. Let's think of a car that has four tires on it. Now, each of those tires has air in the tires and those tire pressures are supposed to be even. Let's say it's 30 PSI per tire based on the manufacturer. If we have one tire that's at five, one at 30, one at 50, and one at, I don't know, let's say 12, how is the car gonna run down the road? It'll run, but it's not gonna really drive as well as it could. It's gonna be pulling, it's gonna be shimming, it's not gonna be optimized. And as you go faster with the car, that driving is gonna be worse. So we have to add some air to some tires and take away air from the other tires. That's a very similar process in, in thinking about how we're going to adjust the carburetors for the airflow through them. The reason why you need the vacuum sink is because when the carburetors are flowing even, the engine's happy. It idles well, it starts easy, it runs smooth, all the way from idle speed to its top RPM. When it's off, much like on our tire analogy, the engine is kind of fighting itself internally and it doesn't run well. You see symptoms like, uh, I call it rough idling or idling that tends to be peaky where you would come down to a stop, it's stuck at a high RPM, you tweak the uh, screw to bring the idle speed down, then it's too low and you can never quite find the right idle position. Or it always tends to hang up, especially as the engine warms up and it just never wants to slow down. Uh, engine accelerates rough and it's always shaking. You're hearing kind of knocking and clacking noises internally in the engine. These are all signs of the vacuum sink being off. The next question is, when to vacuum sink? And the short answer is, technically anytime you take the carbs off the bike and put them back on the bike, you should reset the vacuum sink. But more specifically, you have to have a few things done first in order for the sink to be accurate. Carbs has got to be clean and rebuilt. You got to have good intake manifolds that are sealing well. Air filters need to be in place. Your cam chain's adjusted, your valves are adjusted, and your ignition time is adjusted. And finally, when you had those carbs off, you needed to have done a bench sink on the carbs as a starting place. If the bench sink is off, this thing is never gonna start. So that's an important process to get everything ready to do this vacuum sink. The synchronization process is gonna to apply to a lot of four cylinder bikes, but in particular, we're gonna be looking at the late 60s through late 70s four cylinder Hondas. This is gonna be your CB750s, CB550s, CB500Ks, and the small fours, the 350F and 400F. Now the process is relatively the same for all the bikes, but before we start the process, we're gonna to have to identify three key components in and around the carburetors in order to make the adjustment. The first is the ports and where you tap your vacuum lines into for your vacuum signal. The second is gonna be your idle speed screw, which controls how fast the bike is idling. And third is gonna be the synchronization adjustment screws, which adjust each of the carburetors to one another during the process. Now we're gonna show you on locations on a couple of different more common bikes because those parts are in slightly different places based on bike and carburetor design.
I want to show you guys real quick all the different components that come in our uh, sink kit. It's kind of one we put together that we like to use here in the shop. And it's going to do everything you need it to do to get the sink done correctly. Starting on this side, these are the actual sink port adapters that screw into the uh, carburetors or into the um, manifold, depending on the model of the bike. This is the sink wrench. It's essentially a flathead screwdriver and a 8 millimeter wrench combo together so you can reach down between the carbs and actually do the adjustment. Vacuum gauge, uh, some fuel line with some fuel connectors. We're going to do this process using the factory fuel tank. And then this is the vacuum lines and a uh, multi set of, uh, it's called a gang valve, put together so we can toggle on each cylinder independently uh, as we're doing the sink. I'm going to point out uh, you know, this type of gauge setup. Uh, these are really common where you have two or four mechanical gauges on a bank here. And these work, but they do have issues. And the real issue is that uh, the gauges don't always read accurate to each other. So you're trying to sync the bike up, trying to get accurate readings off of them, and each one is off from one another and you'll never get in sync. So we like to use a single gauge method where we use just one gauge and we toggle off the cylinders between one gauge. That way we get an accurate reading every single time. This is gonna be our stopping point for our first video in this synchronization series. We've covered what synchronization is and why it's important, as well as how to set up the tools to perform the synchronization on the bike. Now we're gonna jump into a second video actually doing the sync in real time. So make sure you check that out because it shows the process as we're doing it. If you haven't done it already, please make sure you follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Subscribe to our newsletter via our website. And of course, subscribe down below to this YouTube channel. Follow along, we're gonna jump into video number two and perform the synchronization on this Honda 550.